Thank you for joining us at the Roundtable. Brought to you by Community Education Arts, a nonprofit organization based in Noblesville, Indiana. I'm Alice Cavanis Gober, President of CE Arts. And I'm Sarah E. Morin, Secretary of CE Arts. Let's sit down at the Roundtable. I, I can tell you're not you're not as sold on Jane Eyre as I am. Well, to me, and I'll be brutally honest right now. The reason I'm not as sold as, on Jane Eyre is because um, I feel like uh, I don't know how do I say this? I feel like we've kind of one one year we had Wuthering Heights and Pride and Prejudice. Do you remember? Mm -hmm. And, and I feel like that was yesterday. And I know it wasn't. It was like the first year you know, or, or the second year or something. But, I mean, I feel like that's just so so familiar, you know. It, does that make sense? Is that weird? You're saying it's too popular? No, it's too, it's like, like we just did something like, you know, we just did a Bronte, you know. As, I mean, yeah, I, I don't think that Jane Eyre and Jane Austen are similar, but I oh, would agree no, I that don't. the Brontes are similar. I yeah, I just feel that. like, but, but I, I, I think it's a really, uh, God, I, this is just part of my own personal prejudice, I'm sure, is that I've, I, I like, I like Wuthering Heights better than Jane Eyre. I mean, those are definitely the two best Bronte books. I've read all of them, you know. Would you give are, it to me because it's the only book I've nominated this year? Yeah, no, absolutely. That's what I was about to say. I was about to say, I think it should be our third book because, you know, I pretty much created this list because I had more time on my hands than you did and months and months and months ago. And I'm perfectly fine with, with doing Jane Eyre as one of them. That just leaves me in the terrible position of trying to decide between Dracula and Portrait of Jane. Right. But I, I would, I would hope, okay, so for, uh, formally and officially, Jane Eyre is number three, or Yay! not in a ranked order, but just <laughs> in a chosen, done deal order. Um, and then, so now we're left with Portrait of Jenny and Dracula. And um, gosh, you know, I'm not going to hate either one of those. So I would be open to either. I'm more familiar with Dracula, but I liked what you've told me of Portrait of Jenny. Again, I don't remember it. Um, and I, I like I, the passages you've read. I, I honestly don't know how many people in the world have even ever heard of it, let alone read it. I mean, it's not, I mean, it was, it was popular when it came out. It was kind of like, it's kind of like a cult classic kind of a thing in a way. It had a, it had a popular following, but it's not taught as, you know, it's not taught in high school. It's not taught in most literature classes. You, you find this book, you run across it accidentally. This isn't something that that, um, you know, I think is studied, you know, in, in literature classes. It may be referenced in literature classes every once in a while um, at a certain level of literature class, but I don't know that in the popular consciousness it's going to speak to very many people. I would love to use it so that people would be introduced to it. Mm -hmm. One of the good things about it is it's a very short book. You could read the whole book pretty quickly. It's not long. Dracula is a very long book. But, you know, we always go with a, a selected passage as our starting point for people. They don't have to read the whole book. So I try not to think, you know, it's like when we pick the Brothers Karamazov. That's a long book. You know, we picked a passage that stood alone, you know. So I try not to think, oh, this is a long book. We should pick it. Or, oh, this is a shorter book. We should pick it. But, you know, for people who do want to revisit the entire tome, as it were, uh, one of these is way shorter than the other, so uh, and and just equally as rich in material. So it's it's hard for me to choose between the two because I love them both. Mm -hmm. I think I think we would probably um, I think Dracula complements Jane Eyre a little mm -hmm. better because yeah, you know, well, one published in 1847, one published in 1897. They're both considered gothic. Mm -hmm. stories they're both you know fiction they both you, you know I mean I think they kind of 
complement each other um, more naturally. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, it does. It does. Um, I think Dracula, too, it, it appeals to both men and women probably yeah. equally. Yeah. Yeah, I, so, I, I, I would be very interested to see how many men submit something based on Jane Eyre and Little mm -hmm. Women. <laughs> I think that would be funny. Spike right? will submit something on Little Women. That's, it. That's, <laughs> That's it. his favorite That's book. It. Hey, we got one coming. We got one coming. But, um, yeah, I think, I think um, I, I'm, I'm good with either Portrait of Jenny or Dracula. In some ways, I think. I think Portrait of Jenny is the better choice because of the philosophical uh, bent to it and, and the way that it's written. There are very accessible short passages that, that would give us a lot to work with. Mm -hmm. Dracula, as you can see from my notes, I was very tempted to say, oh, okay, here's a nice little short passage, but here's the longer quote, or mm -hmm. here's the medium longer quote, and then here's the really longer quote. You know, So I was already looking at workshop material going sure. deeper in, you know, sure. which I would certainly be able to do with Portrait of Jenny, but Dracula, just because it, I, I you know, I, I don't want to say I could quote the book word for word, but I could certainly quote passages of it <laughs> without reading. So, so um, I'm fine with either one. Um, I, you know, I'm fine with, with either one too. Yeah. Um, that doesn't help you, does it? Well, um, I think part of our job is to go beyond our personal feelings and look at how uh, if we have a potential book that is somehow more accessible to the public, mm -hmm. we, it behooves us to pay attention to that. And I think Dracula does that simply because of, you know, its popularity from the get go as, you know, this gothic vampire story, the first one, whatever, and all the film, TV books, comics, you know, I mean, you know, graphic novels. I mean, it is just so many vampire-esque things in popular conscious and, and uh, what is that, in, in pop culture mm -hmm. stem from this book. And yet people all know the, the name Dracula. They may not have read the book, but they know there was that. Right. They know there was that movie with Bella Lugosi. They know the history. They can delve deeper into it with our project if they want to, you know, whether it's the book or the movies or whatever. We can, we can help guide that with workshops and everything, and people mm -hmm. can do it on their own. So, I mean, I think that's probably the most appropriate choice um, for this year as our fourth, our fourth book, but I'm, I'm not the final say. I'm asking. I'm suggesting that we look at that part of it. Right. I think that Dracula as a book as a whole is stronger yeah. um, for the reasons that you said. As I'm looking at the quotes, I, I really think Portrait of Jenny has prettier quotes. I do too. There's so, yeah. I mean, there's just, and, and I love that, you know, we, you spoke earlier about how we do an underrepresented, you know, blah, blah, blah. I mean, I know he's, a, he's a, Robert Nathan is a man, he's white, whatever, but this is an underrepresented story. It's an underrepresented novel. Mm -hmm. um, I think we could introduce a lot of people to it and the beauty of that, the way it's written and, and the evocative nature of some of the passages that we've, we've got on our list as potential passages mm -hmm. speak to all kinds of artists. And, right. And, and I, I do feel like that's true of Dracula too. Um, I, I just, I just kind of worry about missing the boat on connecting with younger audiences with, um, the Dracula because of the new Netflix show and the popularity of, you know, I mean, I'm 50, well, how old am I? 50 something. I don't even know how old I am anymore. But, um, but, you know, my Dracula was, you know, Bella Lugosi. And then when I was young, the interview with the vampires and rice stuff came out since then, then you got the whole, what, what was the twilight? And, you yeah, know, twilight. and the Suki, what's the TV show The you know, Oh gosh, the with you know the vampire. I can't remember now. It's, it's so cute. I mean, the, they've had vampire diaries. They've had vampire musicals. Yeah, yeah, I mean, so I mean, I think Dracula is going to connect with more generations, more ages, more everything. Um, it's it that that just keeps 
the back of my mind, I keep saying part of our job is to to tap into generations and younger people and different, sure, you know, different uh, collaborations. Okay, so if our original collaboration is the book by Ram Stoker, if we chose if we chose that, people could use within their creative inspirations a lot of material that has come more recently in our lifetimes. You know, That's a lot true. of derivative. That's the word I've been looking for, derivative material. Mm -hmm. With Portrait of Jenny, it's simply the beauty of the passages as written. Yeah. That's pretty much it. Because, you know, although there are derivative stories, and but, I mean, this was 1940. It wasn't the first lost through the mist of time to find my true love person. I mean, you know, this is a derivative of that, that kind of writing, that kind of story. So, again, I'm, I'm torn between... Yeah. Looking at it, you know, if I were not me and I was reading the announcement of nice, you know, passages selected this year, I would be like, Portrait of Jenny, huh? That's a beautiful passage. But I don't know what that's on. Dracula, I'd be like, oh, Dracula, what is it? You know, you know, I mean, as a, as a person in the world, Dracula is more familiar, more accessible. And I feel like that maybe we should work with that. Okay. What do you think? Um, I think that as far as appealing to young folks, the young folks are very familiar with Little Women because the movie just came out. So right. we have something for them. That's but I think you are right about they'll relate to Dracula more. Um, since, because I love this idea of this kind of pandemic isolation theme we can delve into this year particularly, which of those two books is stronger in that theme? Portrait of Jenny. Okay. Yeah, because it's, it's, he's so isolated already. And then this, this like crazy secret he has that there's this little girl who's growing up, you know, in, in weird time that, that is supposed to be his one true love. He can't tell people about it. You know, all he can do is paint her portrait. You know, that he can't, because people wouldn't understand. They would think he was either crazy or he was a pedophile. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, at some point in the story, there's like, what? You know, he can't tell people about this. His, his isolation becomes so, so internal. And yet, the, the way he talks in the book, the way the character develops, is goes into these universals. Mm -hmm. And it's very fascinating. Um, but at the same time, you know, Jonathan Harker's crazy in his mind. He's isolated in, the, in Dracula's castle, you know, mm -hmm. with, a, with an invisible, kind of an invisible threat, you know, because it, he yeah. doesn't even know that there are the, the, the female uh, vampires are after him too you know <laughs> so you know it's... right and as i think about the derivatives of dracula a lot of the derivatives have to do with isolation yes it's is dependent on the derivatives of the derivation well and even think about ranfield who's you know locked up in the psych ward you know i mean you know he's he's the he's the bug eating minion of dracula and he's literally a mental patient locked up in a mental hospital Mm -hmm. Talk about isolated, you know. Mm -hmm. so, oh, I don't know, Alice. I, don't I think know. we got to just bite the bullet and say Dracula. And we'll okay. If Portrait of Jenny or do something special in a workshop, we could bring that in with a Dracula workshop or something. With some, I don't know. I don't know what we could do. I don't know mm -hmm. what. I'm so, I'm so torn. But we could keep talking forever about this. We could. We could. <laughs> Um, I think we have our, our four winners. And so I think just on our next podcast, we pick the exact quotes though all right so officially officially we've got gone with the wind jane eyre little women and dracula feel good yep. are we happy yep. okay I'm, happy. I'm so sorry portrait of jenny i'm so sorry <laughs> dorian gray we'll come back to you another year yes you know and emma we'll come back to you another year yeah <laughs> so yeah, okay. no i think that's a that's a good list it's going to be good conversation out of those okay awesome yay we did it This has been At the Roundtable with Alice and Sarah E. of Community Education Arts. Our nonprofit organization is based in Noblesville, Indiana. You can find us online at cearts.org. This activity made possible in part with support from the Indiana Arts Commission and the National Endowment for the Arts, a federal agency. We'd like to thank James Weston for writing our intro music and for his technical savvy. Join us next time at, at the, the Roundtable. Table.